Coons class, Audra here. This is Brooke. This is Julia. And this, this is Tie-Dye Tie Bonanza. So basically for our project, we've soaked five 100% cotton shirts in five different solutions, including salt, vinegar, um, soda ash, and baking soda, in hopes of discovering what kind of chemicals will react with the cotton and the dye, and which chemicals will make the dye stronger and make the colors more vibrant. Hey. Jill's not a science guide here. Oh, you're too nice. So today we're going to talk a little bit about chemistry. You may take it at high school. Probably not. Who needs that class anymore? Anyways, here's a little bit about chemistry about tie-dye. People have been dyeing clothes since the Bronze Age. The water from dyeing opens up bonding sites in the cotton fibers, allowing a bonding site for dye. Dyes are fiber reactive, which is why the reaction can occur. Dye bonds to carbon, which is why dye on the cotton t-shirts are permanent and stay vibrant even after several washes. We mixed the following reactants with water to form the solutions we used in our experiment. Prior to dyeing the t-shirts, we soaked the five different t-shirts in the various solutions the night before. It's been 14 hours. They're still stable. They're not dying. <laughs> so we got four buckets. One has water. One has the water with the salt. One's got water with baking soda. One water with soda ash. And one water with vinegar. And we're going to take them out. Gently squeeze. Gently now. And then we're going to rubber band them up to prep them for the dying experience. <laughs> children. Ew, what the heck? Ew. Here's Jill Dye, the science guy, to explain the chemistry behind tie-dye. Jill Dye, the science guide. Jill, 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 Jill. Science rules. Cold water is used for keeping clothes vibrant. Cold water saves most energy and is the safest for dyeing clothes. Oh, oh, hey there. <laughs> Salt and painting terms repels paint, so we thought it would be interesting to see how it affects tie-dye. Salt is not a fixative, contrary to some beliefs. It's actually used to drive the dye onto the fiber for bonding purposes. Baking soda is a supplement for soda ash and it works a similar way, so we thought it would be quite dandy to check that out. Soda ash is meant for tie dyeing. It is known for opening up binding fibers and fabric that will help the cotton absorb the tie dye applied to the surface. Good evening. Vinegar is often used in dyeing Easter eggs. It's been used since 715 BC. Ha, huh, I remember those days. It has been proven to form the brightest of all colors. Water is meant to soften the dye and fabrics, and the colors in this shirt are definitely the softest, as Jill predicted. For salt, it was correct because the dye attached to the fabric fairly well. For baking soda, the colors stayed on the most, and it has an overall nice appearance. For soda ash, the cotton absorbs the dye and hardly any came off the shirt. Through our experiment, we were able to disprove Jill's idea that vinegar would keep the dye colors vibrant. The vinegar did not react with the dye on the cotton to form strong bonds like the other chemicals. The dye did not stay vibrant and much color ran off. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, we recommend pre-soaking your garments in soda ash or baking soda for the best results. Thank you for watching! And here are some fantastic bloopers! Because you look like Schmeagol. Don't move your body. Just do your face. This one. Mm. Don't step on any poop. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Go! <laughs> hey! <laughs> I got you. Shout out to Coon's class, fourth period. Mr. Coon, you the real MVP.